Hello again, everybody. We're back on Hilton Head Island today, and today we're checking out the Coastal Discovery Museum. Now, this is part of a Smithsonian deal, so there is lots of stuff to see here, and more interesting stuff like Segway rides, or you can recycle your oysters instead of just throwing them out. So, let's take a look around the place and see what we can see today, shall we? Let's go have some fun. And we're here. Looks like there's a place called the Discovery House. There's a little sign up there and there's a bunch of parking. So let's, let's take a look over here and see what we can see. Well, there's a butterfly enclosure. So we're right here and you have the Discovery House. There's a Hilton Head Island Hall of Fame, a butterfly enclosure, supervisor's house. It looks like this place is pretty, you know, I know these oak trees have been around for a while, but it is still really impressive to see them when they get this big and this old. And you can see there's some resurrection fern up there. It hasn't rained for a little bit because it's gone dormant again. I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but this appears to be a pretty old building. They keep it up well, but the paint covers up how how uh, old the building is. And then they have neat things like this. It's the the whining wall. We're gonna go that way. I guess that's what the house looked like originally. Okay, so we're in the front door now. I'm not really gonna show everything, but it tells everything about the beach, African origins and the plantation era. There's some sweet grass baskets. How it's a barrier island. There's definitely a lot of stuff in here. We've even got folks that looks like weaving those sweet grass baskets. Uh, yes. Yes. This is a pretty cool place. Alright, so somebody's done a topographic kind of map of that you can see how the water really gets deep and gets hardcore. And you have stuff like Granite Point and the Harvard Town Lighthouse. Interesting little fact. So the Frasers are the ones that got everything started. And there's Charles Fraser. And you can see, if you go back to an older video of mine, you'll see you out and about Hilton Head. You will see that that was a pretty cool sculpture that they made based off of that alligator thing. And there is the original gate which was, and it's now called the Open Ocean Gate. So, that's pretty cool. going on. Now, if you go back through my older videos, the Baynard Ruins, I believe, were part of 
indigo. And over time, things have just changed. The Cliveden. So see, originally there wasn't two bridges that came to Hilton Head. They had to do a ferry over. Oh well. So this was a kid zone. So, so this gives you an idea of all those turtle nests that are on the island. What happens when they all hatch out? It's a pretty uh, interesting little room. And there is the famous horseshoe crab. Gotta love these stools. Interesting way to add on things. Gotta love the old copper roof too. And the small chimney. Remember what I was telling you guys about the baskets? These are some beautiful works of art. And you can see that they make them in all sorts of different patterns. And you work with what you can. It takes a lot of work, but it's worth it because these baskets last a long time if you take care of them. So the Miss Kathleen, it's a shrimp trawler from 1985. The funny thing is they really haven't changed the tech that much over the years. Hey, if people have uh, watched my older videos, you probably recognize that place. You know, this is a great, great place because it is really giving you a large area to talk to kids, talk to folks about. All pretty neat. Huh. Little Ray Ellis. Now, this is a little bit from over on to Fusky, because there used to be an oyster factory. And my, oh my, look at how that's beautiful. That can is virtually perfect. So, the Fusky Island is next door to Hilton Head. It's really right next door to, to Hilton Head. If you look at this map, Hilton Head's got all the red dots and then Defusky has the green dots. So this is a neat little model showing. And you just brought them in, you shocked them, you canned them, and everything was good to go. Now this looks like they're more focusing on people taking great photos. These are just some amazing pieces right here. I don't know if they're for sale or not. Maybe they were donated. Maybe they weren't, but uh, it's definitely showing the area. Now that we've done this end of the building, let's go to the other end of the building. And one of these days I'll make it over to St. Helena and we'll see the Chapel of Ease, if it's still there. But this place is awesome for education. Now, if anybody ever watched my About my Hilton Head, Neat Places on Hilton Head, you may have remembered seeing this particular headstone. And of course, like every place, you got to have a really cool gift museum that's got t-shirts, oh, little butterfly shawls. And we will look, we will look around here. They've got some pretty nice stuff. And whoever did the paint job did a great job. Okay, glad to see this. Folks that run Low Country Produce make some pretty awesome jarred stuff. If you're ever near the Buford area or in Hilton Head, you need to check them out. Look at this old prep sink. And these cool cabinets. Well, so they got the rain gardens that help with runoff problems. Evidently this old building is a discovery lab. I want to say that the butterfly section's over there. So we're going to go take a look over there. Wow. 
They definitely got some cool places in the shade and some big magnolia trees. But we're gonna head over there to the Karen Wertheimer butterfly habitat. be the wrong time of the year for it but there are definitely some butterflies in here huh I guess you got some babies or transplants starting over in there This is the Hilton Head Hall of Fame. And this just focuses on all the different people that have made a really big difference. John Curry, Reverend Wilburn, New Hall, Ben Beanie, Ben. Well, so far, that is it for the Hall of Fame. I know there's a boardwalk around here, so let's go try to find that before we leave here, though. So they're kind of mimicking tabby. Tabby was a concrete type product that was made with oyster shells that they've roasted and ground up. But, you know, you use what you can. You know, they've got a lot of really neat walking trails around here, but I think I see one of the boardwalks. So let's go take a look. So they definitely have plenty of areas and definitely tell you about the marsh too. So let's go take a look out here at the Osprey Outlook Boardwalk. Alright, so we've got, I guess people donated in memory of, looks like they go all the way out that way, but look at this view. This view is phenomenal. Now, I'm pretty sure that part of this is the Cross Island Parkway. I am not sure what that specific one is, but look how amazing this is. You just don't get a chance to see places like this. Okay, so I finally found out what spider it is. It's the banana spider or the golden silk spider. Now, they have a couple of different varieties that I've seen. Some that have green butts, and some that have these brown butts but those are the ones that were at the the old church ruins and where you see them all over the place down here so here's more the tidal marsh i don't know if you can see it but there are a lot of little minnowy fish swimming around all right so they've got an insect house they're using they're using bamboo and other things that have holes in it and as you can see, um, there are a lot of bees and hornets and wasps and things. Um, they're important because they're pollinators, but I, I don't think I'm going to get any closer. I don't want to get stung. That would be a bad idea. Okay, that's a pretty cool statue of a 
seahorse, I guess. I'm pretty sure it's a seahorse. You can see that there's more stuff. Now there's a little theater over here. We're going to take a peek at it even if nothing's showing because you have got to see these interesting sculptures that are made by a guy that has put a lot of these sculptures out. Now I'll leave it up to you to see what you think. It's interesting that they made these out of concrete. It's even cooler that they've made it with little busted tile pieces. But look at that. I'm going to get a closer look at that. I'll leave it up to you as to what emotional state that puts you in. All right. Now, me personally, I love that this artist does them, but it just is a little creepy. But somebody has had a lot of fun making a kind of a tidal marshy map of Hilton Head Island out of busted tile. So then, I guess they put a couple of the managers houses together, but now it's the Armstrong and Hack House Museum offices. Huh. I see an opportunity for a fun pick. Well, that was definitely a fun pick, but like I said before, I love these things, but the sculptures always give me a little bit of the heebie-jeebies. And just in case you wanted to know who the art sculptor was, Walter Palmer. Now, it appears that there's some barns and stuff down that way and some open spaces, but we're gonna go back this way. I'm gonna go poke my head in the gift shop, maybe get myself a little something, but uh, we are done for the day. So I'll see you guys back at the gift store. If you wanna get into another little thing and focus a little bit more on the Gullah history, they have these Gullah Heritage Trail tours. Um, they've been doing it for a while. And uh, you just look for it on Hilton Head Island. And I guess they start here, but it's pretty cool. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed my little jaunt over to the Coastal Discovery Museum in Hilton Head Island. A lot of history, a lot of cool nature stuff, a lot of hiking trails that I didn't hit today because it was just a little too hot. It's in the 90s, so... Uh, I'm off to go on some more journeys. Until then, why don't you go on some journeys of your own? We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.